So welcome back to Outdoors with the Morgans. Just got my second load of stone of the year. Uh, took it down to the brick house. Uh, Levi and Kate's driveway was getting kind of muddy. Matter of fact, everybody's driveway is this winter. It just won't freeze up. Uh, the weather has been just miserable. And I hate to complain about the weather because all of 2022 was really nice. It really was. 23 isn't starting out so nice. It just won't freeze up. Uh, there's a lot of things I'd like to be doing out in the woods, and it is nearly impossible to get out there. I mean, you could, but you're just going to tear everything up. Uh, we get rain, snow, just a little bit of snow, warms back up again, more rain. Last night, we actually had some thunderstorms. I mean, the real deal in the middle of January, but uh, yeah, it's not looking good for snow. And uh, But we may get a big blizzard real soon, I'll tell you why. Because yesterday, I took the snowblower off the LX. So I got some more uh, wood up inside the building here, some more of that tongue and groove. And then yesterday, I got a whole bunch more here ready to go. I got a system here. I used my scaffold for drying racks. And so this evening what I'll do, I'll use that wood up, everything that I can reach in here in between these windows. And once that's empty, then I'll use the scaffold to finish that wall going across that way. But we've got some help coming uh, next week for in here. We should be able to wrap this up relatively quick. I got a guy coming uh, to put wainscoting inside those rooms in there, in the closets in there. We're gonna put metal inside the bathroom over there, the whole bathroom. I think it'll look pretty nice. We'll do the same wainscoting we have right here on this side and then here in the bathroom we'll have that wainscoting but then we're going to do copper penny i think it's called like a copper look all the way up ceiling's already done in here so they're going to take care of all that by that point i'll have all the wood done here in the game room we'll be able to start hanging doors and working on the kitchen so we're kind of figuring out appliances for in here i think we'd like to get like a regular commercial 
refrigerator, like a big double door. So I need to find the uh, measurements for that. And we're not getting crazy with cabinets or anything, but we'll put a few cabinets in here. Lazy Susan underneath by the bar. And uh, yeah, we're gonna roll right along here. Then out here, we're gonna put metal up there. I was gonna use tongue and groove, but we're gonna go with that bronze color, what the, uh, you know, the trim is on the outside of the building and just put metal up in there and on the sides. And uh, I think that'll look really good. I'm doing that for two reasons. Number one, the only wood that I'll have on the outside of the building to maintain or the posts right there. Yeah, you know, there's four of those. And we may even wrap them in something as well. But I'm trying to do the outside as maintenance free as possible. That's reason number one. And reason number two, I'm gonna have a bunch of this tongue and groove pine left over. And that will be a good start for the interior of the cabin down in West Virginia. These are all 12 footers in he over here. And these are all 16s right here. I've been working through the 12s. Uh, the 16s are nice when you get up high and you can do those big long runs. Uh, but most places you're cutting around things and uh, 12s are actually a little easier to handle, especially when you're on the scaffold. You know, you can get one, one part started on one end and you're back and forth trying to get it tight. I use some clamps off the ceiling. It doesn't take long, but I kind of like just using the 12 footers. Here in a little bit, I'm going to uh, put the bucket back on the LX. I've got a little bit of stone left down by the uh, equipment shed there. I want to spread that and actually try out this tractor, the loader on it. And then we are going to split some firewood this afternoon. Then later on tonight, we'll work inside the building. All right, we're going to take the uh, LX down to the wood yard. I don't have to do this right now, but I just wanted to... Uh, try out the loader a little bit all that I've used this tractor for so far was a little bit of snow plowing with the rear blade not much at all I've got the forks on it right now we're gonna take that off put the bucket on and just spread a little bit of stone see how it feels turn the wiper on I know the cab is nice and cozy the heater works really well and I'll tell you what, today, I get cold on days like today. It's probably 33 degrees right now, but it's that half rain, half snow. Uh, it's just wet, damp, and cold. Like, it could be 15 or 20 degrees, and I would be warmer than I am when I'm outside today. It doesn't make any sense, but it's the way it is, at least for me. Wet, damp, cold. Don't like it.
me show you something here. If you're going to buy a tractor, and I don't care what kind of tractor it is, but go to your dealer and get in that tractor and just run the loader up and down for a few minutes. You can learn so much so quick about if it's the right tractor for you or not. You want a smooth loader, at least I do. Maybe you don't, but for me that's important, especially when you're uh, spreading stone. But just get in that tractor, get the RPMs up a little bit. Now I'm moving it real slow, but this thing is super smooth. It's kind of like the loader on a, uh, you know, like a skid loader or a bigger tractor. You know, some of the small ones can be a little herky-jerky, but boy, this thing is nice and smooth. It's quick, too. I'll, I'll take it all the way down to the ground and just pull her straight up. I'm at about uh, 1,900 RPMs right now. Nice and quick. But sometimes... You know, slow is smooth, and they say slow is smooth, smooth is, smooth is fast, don't they say something like that? I don't know. Yeah, it feels nice and stout. I like it. I'll pull some of this back so we're not chasing it all over the place. This has a uh, bucket level indicator on it there. You can kind of tell anyway without it, but uh, that's a nice little feature. First couple uh, buckets of stone in the LX. I really like the loader. Nice and smooth. Feels nice and stout. But anyway, we better uh, we better split some firewood. We are way way behind this year. We'll get caught up, but uh, I'm gonna pull the split force out of here, back behind the dump trailer. I've got a bunch of rounds cut up back there, maybe a half a quart or something, but we'll get that split up. And then uh, tomorrow, hopefully, it's not as wet and rainy tomorrow, but tomorrow we'll do some more cutting and uh, get some wood cut and split. Everything we split into the dump trailer, we uh, stack into IBC totes. But here in the next week or so, I think I mentioned the other day, I need to clean out the firewood bunker and then we'll fire up both the wolf ridge and the split force and make a bunch of wood.
All right, got some wood split, and now we need to head up to the building, and I'm gonna tell you about a mystery that I'm trying to solve. All right, we're back up the building. Wait to hear this story, though. So as most of you know, our oldest son, Hunter, has autism. He's nonverbal, he doesn't talk, and he can be a little bit quirky at times. For example, certain lights in the house have to stay on, other lights have to be off. Uh, certain doors inside the house uh, have to be open, others have to be closed. Uh, all pens, pencils, things like that, you can't leave one lay on your desk. They always have to be put back in a cup that I have on my desk. Matter of fact, I had a pencil in my ear the other day from when I was over here working in the building. I walk in the house, Hunter comes up to me, pulls the pencil out real quick, puts it away. It's just the way he is. And there are dozens of things like that. It just is what it is. And it kind of comes with the territory of being autistic. Well, we have a new problem and uh, we're trying to figure it out. So I had to take the camera out of the mount to show you this, but this is a magnetic mount. I have a couple of these and I use many different cameras. A lot of people ask about that, uh, but right now I'm using a GoPro 10. Well, with this mount and all other mounts, you have one of these right here, okay? Now I had a bunch of these because I've gone through a bunch of GoPros. You know, they get smashed and broken and things like that. So each time you buy one, you always get one of these in it. So I probably had seven or eight of these. Well, on my desk in the house, where I do my editing, I have, you know, microphones, all types of camera equipment, different mounts, wires, batteries, all sorts of stuff around the computer that's somewhat organized, but it's all around the computer that I edit on. Well, one day I noticed that I was missing one of these. And I thought, oh, maybe it fell on the floor. Who knows what happened? I looked all over the place, couldn't find it. Okay, so I get another one out, start using it. Next day, that one's missing as well. Turns out Hunter is putting these somewhere and we have no idea why. Melissa and I tried everything today. I would hand him one and say, here, Hunter, put this away. And he'd go give it to Melissa. I know he knows we're on to him. And like I said, he's nonverbal, so we can't even interrogate him. But I gotta figure this out, because so far I've lost, well, he has lost probably seven or eight of these so far. I actually have to buy more. This is my last one. So I'm probably gonna go lock this in the safe when I'm done today, so at least I have it for the next video. But yeah, I gotta figure that out. But it's just part of it, you know what I mean? But it's just one of those things I would like to find an answer for and solve that little mystery. But uh, we'll see what happens. But anyway, I think that's about it for today's video. I appreciate y'all being here, and I will catch you on the next one.